Ladies and gentlemen, we have been building the momentum for the nationals here at the debate circle. And for this knockout run, we have Nova Pioneer Tattoo Boys versus Center Sambony Girls and the motion for dissection reads, African countries should reduce their reliance on foreign debt borrowing by increasing domestic tax revenue. I read the motion again. African countries should reduce their reliance on foreign debt borrowing by increasing domestic tax revenue. All the best to both teams. Team proposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. You see, in life, there are no rewards, neither are there punishment, but consequences. So go ahead and look forward to such a fantastic life. Go ahead and plan ahead, and make sure you plan really well. But kindly, do yourself a big favor. Do not add yet another debt to the already existing one. Please. My name is Mudokiana from Centrist Mboni Girls, and I'm here to strongly propose the motion that African countries should reduce their reliance on foreign debt and increase on domestic tax revenue. What is to reduce? To reduce is to minimize or to lower what the foreign debt is the money borrowed from outside countries or banks. And reliance is the dependence on something or someone such that you cannot do without. And what is the domestic tax revenue? Domestic tax revenue is the money earned by the government from the profit and earnings of, of, of the citizens. Let me paraphrase it for you. What I'm trying to say is that the African countries should try and minimize their reliance on borrowing of money from outside countries and actually increase on the money they gain from the earnings and profits of their own countries. You see, from here, I can already see your frowning faces when I started by saying that the government should increase on its domestic tax. Please, stop frowning. I am trying to say that the government should emphasize more on the regressive tax, corporation tax, proportional tax, capital gain tax, the VAT, export duty, and the world tax. You see, if all these, if the government was to emphasize on all this, I am telling you that we will actually become an independent continent. Demonizing foreign debt, I do not, because I know no man is an island, and that is why. We, as Africa, are supposed to actually expand on our tax base. According to the International Monetary Fund in July 7, 2022, they stated that about 55% of the sectors we have in our continent, Africa, are informal. And by informal, I mean that they do not get the formal payment. And these 55% are actually on the tax payroll. But are they active? Of course, they are not. Karibu Kenya, where we have the Mamambogas. Karibu Kenya, where we have the cut pushers. Welcome to Kenya, where we also have these hawkers. For how long are we going to see the so-called Kanjo run after the hawkers so that they can pay their sales? For how long? Then it is about time that Africa put across measures to make sure that these 55 percentage of the informal sectors are actually paying their tax because the tax being paid by the formal sectors is not enough to fund for the budget to, for the budgetary need this has actually worked in countries such as israel malaysia mauritius whereby the citizens are whereby the citizens have whereby the citizens have received an increase on their domestic tax but they are not complaining simply because it is working properly for them so it is about time that you guys stop sugarcoating everything. It is about time that you guys stop acting so blind to the fact that we should increase on our domestic tax. And please, stop flogging a dead horse and actually focus. Thank you. First speaker, team opposition, you have three minutes. African countries should re reduce their reliance on foreign debt by increasing domestic tax revenue. My name is Victor Ocholi, and I'm here to strongly oppose the motion that states before us today. First off, to my rebuttals. She talked about how we, the African countries should emphasize. What is to emphasize? I think you don't, the main thing of this motion is to increase. We are not just creating more awareness on these taxes, but we are adding the taxes. We need to understand that emphasis and increasing are two different things. We need to be able to distinguish the two. First off, she talked about how will they be able to emphasize is putting more enforcement on people such as the Mama Boga she, she, she illustrated. First off, you want to tell me that these people, these people are living below the poverty line. You want to make them pay more taxes as you 
as your policy stands, as you make, the, make them pay more taxes, make them do, give you more, more money, more funds, and these are the people living below the poverty line. These are the people that do not have the money to cater for their basic needs. We need to understand that in their solution, in their best case, we need to understand that when you add taxes to a developing country, you decrease the level of production, you decrease the level of motivation and innovation in that said country. First off, to my definitions, I would like to talk about what is foreign debt. Foreign debt, this is the money borrowed by a government from another country or uh, another international body, while domestic tax is the tax charged on profit or gains under laws of a territory, territory which an entity is established. So with this, wh what is the burden of the side of opposition? The side of opposition says that increasing domestic tax is not a viable solution to reducing reliability on foreign debt. It's not a viable, viable solution because why is it, why, why should we use, why should we, let's look at the best case scenario when you increase the tax. As I've said before, it lowers the production levels and, that, and, that, and things in that nature. But why, should we, why shouldn't we look at this solution? And what solution should we look at? We should look at increasing the development and the growth of different sectors of our economy, such as tourism, agriculture, and the health se sector, which will, when we Im improve these sectors of our economy, it will help us it will help us reduce the reliance on foreign debt. We will not need to increase the tax of our said countries. We will not need to make people in our countries suffer. First of all, when we talk about the increasing of, the, uh, the increasing of domestic tax in our said countries, we, we don't, we're not able to fulfill the sustainable development plans and goals that we all as a nation, as a continent, want to achieve. This, the main things that will, uh, the main sustainable goals that will be attacked is no poverty, zero hunger, uh, decent work and economic growth, industries, innovation, and infrastructure. When we go through their side, side proposition, we find that we are not able to fulfill these sustainable goals. We are not able to meet these demands and we are not able to grow in these said areas. First of all, to my first point, we need to understand when we go, the, when we go to the side of when we go to the side of proposition, we reduce the amount of foreign, cap foreign capital inflow. This is, we reduce the amount of investments, which will be taken on for by my second and third opposition party. Thank you. Team proposition, second speaker, you have three minutes. My, oh my. You know, times are changing, and as the times change, we have to change with them. We are evolving from an era of borrowing, an era of reliance, to an era of self-reliance, an era of independence, financial independence for Africa. You know, Alvin Toffler once said that the illiterate people of the 21st century are not those who can't read nor write, but those who refuse to learn and learn and relearn. These are people who learned about the, uh, the practice of borrowing. They refuse to unlearn it and adapt new practices like increasing domestic tax revenues. Well, from, from these centuries, morning girls, my name is Vanessa Ndungu. You talked about, uh, you say that uh, the first speaker of the proposition team talked about increasing tax on the mama and boga, that we are taking more from the little that they earn, but what you didn't get, we are talking about the 55% of the informal sectors that are actually not paying the sales which they're supposed to be paying. We're talking about these are the people who are running away from the county officers whom we call the Kanjo. So we're not talking about more taxes on the mom and boga. We're not talking about more taxes on the content creators. We're not talking about more taxes on the hawkers. What we are saying is that percentage that doesn't pay, they should pay. You also talked about that instead of increasing tax revenues that we should improve on sectors like health, tourism, but may I ask, is it, it not the government which is improving on these sectors and the surest source of money of the government we all know is the taxes? Relying on these debts will hamper a country's ability to invest in their local development, hereby thwarting long-term economic growth. Remember, these debts come with interest, and this interest actually add salt to injury. We are, we are using our own tax revenues, our own money from foreign exchange, money we get from trade to pay back this debt, and what is left for our African nations to develop? We are having about 40% of what we are earning. 60% is going to repaying back this debt. How will we ever 
proceed? How will we ever move from third world to first world? According to an article by the African Development Bank, as of July 2023, Ghana is struggling with foreign exchange shortages and is at its worst economic crisis, where they're using 60% of their income tax and money from foreign exchange to repay these debts. And according to the International Monetary Fund's report on Africa as of June 2021, countries like Burundi, Ghana, CAR, uh, have, a present pub uh, have a present value of public debt of GDP of, of the ratio 62% against a threshold of 55%. And let alone the other countries, let us bring the ship back to Kenya, where we are having a, a, a public debt stock of present value 9.182 trillion and we still have to pay for this money since we did borrow the money. We're talking about expanding the tax base. We are increasing new taxes. We are introducing new taxes. For example, the carbon tax. This one is not being imposed directly on the people, so we are not oppressing anyone. This is being put uh, across to industries, and we should be concerned because this is, our co this, is, is, this is our continent, and for sure, we are Africans, and Africa is our business. Thank you. <laughs> Second speaker, team opposition, you have three minutes. African countries should reduce their reliance on foreign debt borrowing by increasing domestic tax revenue. My name is Hilary Dead, and I'm here to strongly oppose the motion. We, as the opposition, are saying that, yes, we should reduce the reliance on foreign debt, but by increasing the domestic tax revenue, that is not the best way. And before I come up to any of my points, I'd like to talk about some of the points that I've come up with. Um, the first and the second proposition has given us a lot of examples about the 55% that are escaping the tax. And they have said the Mamamboga and all of these people and the people who are being chased by Kanjo out there on the street. But the thing that they have failed to realize is, and as she's given a great example, we have a debt of 9.8 trillion, right? The thing that she's failed to give is, is that these people are earning less than one to four dollars a day. What substantial money can we get from taxing them more that won't lead to them suffering in their own life? She's given also examples of places where they've increased the tax and the tax is working, but she's not given examples of places in Africa. If you look at places in Africa, the places with the highest debts, the highest taxes are one, the Ivory Coast, Senegal, Zimbabwe, Guinea, Republic of Congo, and guess what? Out of all of those that I've mentioned, all of them are in top 10 for the poorest countries in Africa and some of the ones with the highest debts or the ones that are probable and really, really unlikely to pay back any of their debt. Meaning that raising the, raising the tax is not the way to solve our problem. Raising the tax would, in their best case scenario, right, we raise the tax. And people don't complain, people don't strike, people don't go out and breaking and looting. What happens? You raise the tax, people are not uh, resisting actively. They'll resist passively. So it passes and we have 50% tax, 40% tax. All of these people are going to be like, what is the point of me working? Because anything I earn goes automatically to the government. Anything I earn, I can't really enjoy. So they passively resist. Meaning that people now start not wanting to work. That is, and meaning that we won't get any more revenue. But then now we go to the actual scenario that is actually happening in places such as Kenya, in places such as Nigeria, in places such as South Africa, where the government proposes a new tax bill and the people are like no we don't want it so what do they do they go out and they start money money they go out and start breaking things what happens all of the things that they break they cost money all of the things that they destroy they have to fix and so the revenue that was supposed to go into the economy what happens it has to go into fixing those things meaning that their live action scenario that is currently happening would put us on our knees and cut off our heads economically and for us to get back not just not to even to our feet but to our knees so that we can actually gain food on the table we'll have to borrow money so that we can supply food to the people meaning that the entire side basically is a roundabout way of increasing the foreign debt and the reliance on it we go back and she said and a question i'd like to give the proposition is where are examples of places where this has worked because I've given you five examples of places where this has not worked.
team proposition have been tasked to show how Mamamboga, or rather the informal sector, are actually not paying taxes? What is the evidence basing this claim? Team opposition have also been tasked to give a case study or evidence that shows where people have actually stopped working or employment has stopped existing due to increase of domestic taxes. <laughs> team proposition, third speaker, you have three minutes. I will not stand back and watch Africa fall back under colonialism. I will not stand back and watch Africa fall back into its medieval edges. My name, Annette Wafula. So you ask why uh, evidence of how the Mamamboga have not paying taxes. Well, after an assessment on 2023 January 13th, the IMF verified that Kenyans who are in the informal sector do not pay their cess. So yes, the Mamamboga do not pay their cess. They do not pay the tax. Formal, um, <clears throat> foreign debt falls under external borrowing. And the external borrowing comes with strings attached. By strings attached, I mean that it comes with set policies that your country borrowing money needs to follow for the money to be released. I mean that, why set policies for a country borrowing money? Why do that? Ugandan President Museveni, in the, in, the year January, in the year 2023, July 22nd, refused to allow LGBTQ in his country that fell under him as a set condition by the foreign government because he was borrowing money. We know African as a continent has country rich in culture. We are putting this culture on the line, but just because of money, borrowing money from co foreign governments that are trying to impose that African culture is the wrong way. How many countries in Africa are speaking their native language? How many? Zero. Why is that? We have been showed by this foreign government that it is wrong to speak the African language, but they always speak the Anglophone and the Francophone. These are the popular languages speaking, spoken in Africa, and these are from the colonialists. And we, as Africans, are accepting them. And if a country chooses to accept these policies, their economic sector is going to face a problem because this foreign government that we claim to be helping the African countries will provide a specific amount of money to a specific sector. Talk about the health. If they give us 100 billion, what if this money is not enough to get off of the problems for, this in, for the incredibly increasing population of Africa? What does this mean? This means that a sector there is going to be inadequate medicine. Doctors and nurses will strike because they are not getting enough money for their salaries. And you're saying that we should increase money? We should borrow money to help the Africans? Well, it seems that we are borrowing money to increase our problems. See, if Africa continues like this, it is not only going to be a dark continent, but a miserable, poverty-stricken, dark continent. But there is hope beyond the horizon in increasing domestic tax revenue. And by increasing domestic tax revenue, I am not implying on the people. We are broadening the tax. We are meaning that we are not going to focus on the people. Companies like carbon tax are going to be increased taxation, not like increased taxation. Because when we focus on domestic taxation, tax is certain. Because this tax, anyone, any citizen from a country enjoying the goods and services given by the country is going to pay tax through VAT. And the taxes given are going to be elastic because the government, this money is provided by the country. There are no set policies for how much the country is going to use in a specific sector. So yes, if Africa chooses to increase domestic taxation in the right, in the right way, Africa is going to be an increasing, an, an improved country. Let Africa make the right choices for our sake, for humanity's sake, for Africa's sake. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Solomon, and I'm going to be the third opposition speaker of Nova Pioneer Tattoo Boys. With that being said, I'll start with the question that was asked from the lady uh, in the crowd. She asked us whether there are any viable examples, and yes, there are. I'll give you the Ivory Coast. In the Ivory Coast, in 2009, after they increased the tax to 50%, it led to protests, immigration rising out of the country, and a lot and a lot of damage of property. But maybe that example is not enough for you, so I'll give you Democratic Republic of Congo. After the tax was raised to 45%, it led to more violent riots, decreased 
productivity and increased rates of unemployment. So if you're thinking that there was no viable evidence, there actually is. I'll begin with my rebuttals. First and foremost, they came and gave a lie on stage. The IMF never said that. According to the KRA statistics of 2021 and 2022, it said that there was a 2.5 billion tax increase in the informal sector. This is due to a task force formed by Uhuru Kenyatta, formed by the former Minister of Finance, Yuku Riyatani, and formed by the Minister of Agriculture. They decided to enforce the collection of taxes in the informal sector, and this led to an increase. There's nothing about the IMF saying that that was a false statistic that we have called out. Furthermore, they're talking about Mamamboga, fishermen, and all these people in the informal sectors. Do they realize that these people don't even make enough money to be taxed for it to be substantial? You're taxing someone that makes less than $10 a day. Okay, you do that. How exactly is that going to help them? And furthermore, they're talking about uh, they're talking about freedom. How do you give someone freedom when the little money they're earning is being taken away from them? How do you give that person economic freedom if they don't even have the chance to develop themselves with the money that they already get? Furthermore, I'll move to my first point. Why exactly they're wrong? They're wrong because the tax systems in Africa are inefficient. They're not strong enough for them to actually do anything substantial. I'll give an example of Kenya. In Kenya 2018, 157 point 7 billion was lost because of tax evasion and fraud. In 2019, 431 billion, and in 2020, 448 billion. So if we're losing this amount of money in Kenya, how exactly are you going to say that it makes sense to pump more money into an industry or into a method that's not bringing back anything substantially? That is a flaw, but you give you a solution, a solution that meets standard goals and SDG number eight, uh, decent and economic growth, number nine, industry and innovation, and number one, poverty. What is our solution? Selling of government uh, assets. When you sell government assets, you can earn more revenue because there are a lot of assets in Africa that you have underdeveloped. Like, for example, natural oil and resources. There's oil in North Africa. There's minerals in Southern Africa. There's gas in West Africa. And in East Africa, there's land. If you are to utilize those resources, we can be able to increase more income without having to burden the citizens, ladies and gentlemen. Furthermore, there's pumping money into more viable uh, streams of income. There's tourism. Pump more money into tourism. There's trade. Pump more money into trade. There's agricultural activities. Pump more money into things that give you a viable income, not into things that are detrimental to the African people. And they came on here on stage and said, no man is an island. I'd rather choose to be an island than to be a slave to foreign debt. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was my time. Team Proposition, you have one minute to give your closing remark. You know, I wonder, have these guys been in a coma for the past 10 years and woke up just the other day? You know, I wonder, haven't they seen the status of African countries which are having public debt stock of present values of 9 billion starting with our country, or 9 trillion starting with our country, and moving upwards? You know, you talked about the Mamamboga, the hawkers whom we are imposing more tax on. Well, what are the odds? I happen to be an, I happen to be an African. I happen to be a Kenyan. I am here and I see what happens in our cities. These are people, we're not talking about all the Mamamboga. We're talking about the 55% which evade tax. So I hope that is clear. And about the false statistics about IMF, man is to error and that has been looked on. You also talked about us being a, a, a slave to foreign debt. I think you are actually uh, contradicting yourself because you are actually supporting the foreign debt. And when you talk about Africa not being a slave, that, that, that is actually against what you're saying. So we are Africans yet again, and Africa is our business. And we have to shape up, or soon we will be shaping out. Thank you. Centuries Mboni Girls. Team Opposition, you have one minute to give your closing remark. First of all, I think there's been a miscommunication. We are not supporting uh, foreign debt. We are we are not supporting foreign debt. We are ignoring and denying the increasing of domestic tax as the best way to actually solve the problem, right? And you said that you're not going to be taxing the people, you're going to be taxing the companies. But at the end of the day, the tax that you get on the companies will always go back to the people. Because where is the money coming from? The people, right? Um, you've said that 
all of the examples you've given, first of all, uh, of Ghana and how they're in a strife and all that has been due to the fact that, guess what, their tax has been raised, right? And all of the examples that you've given of places where uh, the tax being increased has been a good thing, has been outside of Africa, which are not under the same conditions that the African countries were in, right? We've talked about solutions, and you've given us, you have not talked about how the fact that all of them, a lot of the money that is being raised up in tax never really reaches the revenue. Meaning that we're just going to keep on pumping water into an empty, back into a bucket to the hole. And at the end of the day, we're going to go back to foreign debt, losing everything. Thank you. Thank you. I like the fact that this is still a conversation happening in this country and that there were those examples coming by. But interesting enough, I liked how each of you tried to bring in the elements. I think Borny Girls, Vanessa is the one who hit it well by saying that we are talking about increasing the tax base and that is your point. And I think that's what you meant, that there are people who don't pay taxes and they need to all pay taxes, which is a good stand. How I wish, Anna, you started with that fully so that now it flows by saying, listen, no, 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 it's everybody in the bracket, if you get my point, all right? Uh, but that was good still. Anna, it doesn't mean you did do well. You did very well because of your citations, the IMFs. It was a very good start for you as a team. Vanessa, I think I've mentioned you, and uh, I think all your points were validated. And I like the carbon tax analogy that you brought in. I think that was a good way of trying to say that, listen, there are even more taxes we're increasing. And this is for industries, not particular individuals. Annette, I think you also did very well. I, you brought this element of that, you know, this reliance erodes our culture. And I like the example you gave with, the, with what is happening in Uganda. But I don't know whether that's true. Uh, because I was waiting for you to tell me, according to this particular person, that the president of Uganda was told that if you don't do this, we are not going to give you this. I want to read that personally, so someone might point you out on that. To the ladies, good job on bringing out uh, your points in uh, proposing this motion. I, I like your composure. I liked your eloquency. There was a bit of drama as you were bringing your points out. It was, it was interesting to listen. And um, good reference. It's always good to, to reference your points, but ensure that your, your reference is very credible. Check and, and recheck, and ensure even the figures that you're giving us are true. Uh, to the gentlemen, that was um, uh, strong openings from all three of you. Um, then um, I, I'd want to see you give your individual points as opposed to always countering what the ladies are saying. So in as much as you want to respond to what they're saying, also come up with your uh, original points to make your, your team stronger. And then it was good you mentioned the SDGs. It's good to connect the conversations always to the sustainable goals. So um, I think generally from the opposers, I'd love to have, to, to have had you brought out the fact that there is not all debt is bad. There is some good debt. There is good debt. Yeah, so that um, didn't come out. I didn't hear that. And um, also, I think talking about the issues of uh, collecting tax, is, that, is the issue collecting tax or is it misappropriation of funds? You know? Um, but overall, those were good debates, so all the best. I think we're in agreement that both teams can join Parliament the next finance bill discussion that we'll be having. But allow me to move straight to the judges' desk. We've been building momentum towards the semis and the finals. So I will go straight to the judges' results. And the judges have awarded Nova Pioneer Tattoo Boys with 71.7%. A round of applause, please, for Nova Pioneer Tattoo Boys. And the judges have awarded Center S and Boney Girls with... 71% making the winners of this debate Nova Pioneer Tattoo Boys a round of applause please thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we have come to the end of this debate here at the debate circle remember to check our social media handles for more of this content on the debate circle on YouTube on Instagram on LinkedIn on Twitter and as well as on Twitter and until next time it is goodbye from us